say friends no extra charge for mistakes hey uh guthrie trap here coming to you again from my place here in east nashville tennessee uh thank y'all so much for sticking with me here and being a part of the uh the uh, ever-growing uh family of friends here on youtube i uh, really appreciate it uh this is a little uh that was obviously just some three chord kind of or so uh improv on the blues just um obviously kind of you know, going for it and um, a couple of little ideas there you can you can pick up. Um, I wanted to stress in this little episode here. I wanted to stress the importance of learning some blues on the guitar and how that will translate into uh, every other genre of the guitar and music that you'll play for the rest of your life. Um, some of you might not understand this right now. Some of you might not see the importance of it down the road. But I can assure you that. Um, a lot of your favorite guitar players, if not all of them, have really spent some time learning to appreciate and learning some blues vocabulary on the guitar. Everything, uh, as far as American music goes, is related to the blues. Jazz, country, funk, rock and roll, soul, R&B, pop, uh, even hip-hop, and all these other things are uh, really directly related to the blues. I cannot stress this enough. Uh, and, and, and it's not just about playing blues licks on the guitar, it's the way that the swing feel is incorporated with the shuffle, and it's the way that your bending is uh, very soulful, and it's just uh, creating some soul in your playing and some pocket and some groove. And I know these are musical, musical cliches that we hear all the time, and we like to use things like, oh, it was so musical and it was soulful, and it was in the pocket and in the groove, but these are things that really are true and they are a big deal. And so, um, man, I highly recommend uh, trying to gain an appreciation for the blues if you don't already. Um, I'm a huge advocate of that. I love the blues. It's hard to play. One of the hardest things in the world to do is play a convincing, slow blues guitar solo with some feel to it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, the kids think, it, think it's easy because it's only got three chords, but I can tell you it's one of the hardest things to do. I would much rather try to play a blistering 
um, uh, fast uh, country solo than try to play a slow blues uh, solo with with some feel and really saying something on the on the electric guitar. So with that being said, um, you know the, uh, that thing that I was doing just a minute ago. You really want to. Uh, the other thing that that's that's really important and I've stressed before uh, is is playing along to something that has some time to it. And like you know, when I was a kid, my uncles used to say, "Look, if you're playing by yourself, tap your foot." You know, now we have metronomes and drum machines and all these other things that we can play along to to try to hold us accountable. Because here's the thing, when you're playing in a, a jam situation or with a band or another person or even along to a record, uh, they're going to go to the chorus or that next chord or that solo or whatever, whether you're ready or not. And so if you make a mistake, it's crucial that you keep going and learn how to pick up your feet and, and get on with it. Because... You know, if you're playing by yourself and you make a mistake, you make a mistake, you might stop and try to work it out and go, oh, I made a mistake, I'm gonna try to figure that out. Well, if you're on the bandstand and there's a song going by, man, you've gotta jump in. And this is a big part of how I learned. I mean, I was thrown into situations where I might not have been ready for it, but you know what? I had to fall on my face and then I'd go home and work and, and work harder at, at trying to learn the fingerboard. Um, and then, you know, my dad would take me back out to another jam session and I'd, I'd have to jump in and like had some, you know, crazy guy come up behind me and just, crank, you know, turn the volume all the way up, learn how to play with confidence, learn how to play with, uh, with uh, some conviction. And, and, um, and that really, you know, being thrown into those situations as a kid, as a kid really kind of made it to where now, you know, I'm, I'm not scared to jump into any situation. And so uh, all these things are just, you know, you just can't go wrong with with um, with actual hands-on playing any way you possibly can, and so getting off the subject a little bit, but just the importance of of playing along to some of these records and something that has some time to it. Because oh, getting back to that point is like just kind of keeping that dead thumb going where you're going. going. chord progression and so just keeping that dead thumb and I'm not doing anything fancy I'm pinching together these notes so important it doesn't matter if you you don't have to play any lead guitar at all just do this right but keep it four beats play at the same time so don't expect me to count and play at the same time I'm terrible at that but but that's getting that here's the next chapter of this little lesson is another thing that's super important and that was a terrible uh, 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 display of, of that little example but um, just getting that blues progression in your in your in, in, internalized to where it's like breathing and in, in your heart beating uh, because every other chord change is going to be based on that. And if you can't feel that and that four and that five chord coming in the blues, then you need to go back 
and play along to some some great records. You know, any B.B. King, Albert King, I recommend Eric Clapton from the cradle, whether you like uh, any of that stuff or not, that, uh, or if you're a Clapton fan or not, that record is a great record to play along to. You want to play along to records that sonically sound good, where you can hear the hi-hat and the snare drum and the kick drum and the bass guitar and some of the keyboards and stuff like that. I mean, a lot of these old like live recordings and stuff are great, but you're not hearing the stuff that you need to hear when you're learning like the, you know, if it's a major third in there or the flat seven and like really hearing the groove and the bass. And, and you know, so I, I recommend listening to a lot of great old records, of course, but listen to some more modern uh, records too. B.B. King, Blues on the Bayou, uh, Clarence Gatemouth Brown, Gate Swings, Killer Horn Parts on that. Um, you know, any um, uh, Ronnie Earl. Uh, I like the West Coast jump blues stuff that has a little bit more jazz and, and stuff. You know, of course, we all go to Stevie Ray Vaughan and, the, that, 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 and that kind of stuff too. Of course, those guys are incredible. But I want to hear a little bit more outline than Dominant 7. I want to hear, you know... Sloppy, but kind of a more uptown, you know, uh, swing blues. Where you've got uh, you got the uh, the thirteen in there. So that's that sound around that chord. the pentatonic it's all about breaking out of that pentatonic and really hearing the dominant seven sound so i know this was kind of you know as most of my ramblings on uh here uh, that's kind of um just a little bit of a of uh and i'm gonna delve, eventually i'm gonna delve into more of uh, of this concept of this one four five and how to really play over these nine chords and some really cool stuff out of there out of the arpeggio the uh mixolydian or dominant seven scale that I like to call it, and then playing out of that stuff, because uh, I think that's a big light bulb moment there. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you guys, so I've been teasing a little bit about um, this uh, email that I got a couple weeks ago after I survived COVID in New Orleans. I got back to Nashville. I haven't list, uh, looked at my emails for a while, and I sat down at the coffee shop up here. Uh, Robin Ford lives over here, too, in my neighborhood, and so I see him all the time, but I was um, uh, over in the, at the coffee shop, kind of close to his place, and I'm just sitting out there on a nice day, finally catching up on my emails, and I'm going through lessons and stuff. And then I get down here, and I go, oh, shit, this looks pretty interesting. And so I read through the email, and, man, I got an email from Billy Gibbons. And he personally, so flattered and honored by this and grateful and, and lucky and all those uh, words that, that come to mind. But uh, I'm looking at this email, and, and he personally invited me to be a special guest on his Lifetime Achievement Award Ceremony, the Billy Gibbons Tribute Show at the Grand Old Opry here in Nashville. And so I was just blown away, I almost dropped the phone. And so every once in a while in Nashville, you know, you get an email or a phone call that's a life changer and really, you know, solidifies the fact that, you know, why we do this, why I'm living in Nashville, why I keep working hard at this and, and, and why I love it too. And so you know, every once in a while, there's a little feather in your cap. That's something that I'm really proud of, folks. Uh, we rehearsed on May the 15th. We're playing the show on May the 16th. And so tickets went on sale to earlier today. Um, it's going to uh, air on uh, MTV, Fox, um, uh, iHeartRadio, Access Television, and a couple other things. So check that out. There's an article uh, in the Rolling Stone uh, that, that uh, has, gr gratefully, again, has my name listed in it. 
And so um, that's on my social media. Don't forget, check out Instagram, Facebook, my website and all that stuff. Check out, check out that article. If you want to get tickets, you can. Uh, but that was the news. And I'm just like so blown away that that happened. Um, uh, you're really flattered to be in the New York, uh, the, uh, New York Times, the Washington Post with, uh, with Rick Beato and Kirk Fletcher and some other Kathy Fink, Mar Marky, uh, Marcy Marks, Marker, I think Marks her. I'm not saying that right, uh, but um, uh, fellow uh, online teachers and stuff like that. So just really thrilled that this year just really kicked off in a, in a great way. Um, and I hope that everybody's getting out there and listening to some live music. Support your local restaurants uh, and bars and, and live music scene, man. We need it more than ever. Um, there's a couple cool things coming up. Every Wednesday in May at 9 p.m. at 3rd and Lindsley, we'll be doing a really cool band with me and Nick Govrick, Jimmy Wallace, Josh Hunt, from Jack Pearson's great band, and uh, Jimmy Wallace plays with Joe Walsh at the Wallflowers, my, my brother, and Nick, too, another brother from Trigger Hippie Days we toured with, uh, and then um, Uncle Larry's old band, Trigger Hippie, I took his place in that for a summer tour, and then um, and then every Thursday at Nick's restaurant called Kitchen Downtown at 8 o'clock, we're going to be doing double headers, man, more live music to come in May than ever, and uh, we've got three horns that are going to be in that band, uh, Chris West and two other guys that he hired, saxophone, trumpet, and trombone. Um, and so that's just going to be a lot of fun. Lots of cool stuff coming up. More stuff coming up at Rudy's Jazz Club as well. So keep uh, keep um, informed, like I said, via Instagram being the, my favorite, uh, Facebook, and then, um, of course, my website, GuthrieTrap.com. If you want to expand on any of these things, of course, check out my lessons. I'm happy to book those. And Artist Works, of course. Uh, and I'm just getting back into getting on a routine. I'm going to try to stick to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday routine. And so, um, again, sorry for the long, the long one here, but I'm, I'm just getting back into it and want to keep you guys informed. Thanks so much for your support. Please, um, uh, you know, just, uh, stick with it, friends, you know, keep having fun playing the guitar, try to incorporate a few of these things in, uh, when you can, and let's just have some fun. Thanks a bunch. See you guys. All right. Bye.